Okay, welcome to this day. Um, Nyakundi Makori, I'm a CPAK finalist and uh, I'm a, a member of CPA. Now, I want to take you through budgets and the budgetary controls. We make brief uh, introduction on budgets and budgetary controls. When you talk about a budget, what do we mean by a budget? A budget here simply means a plan of active present in quantitative terms. So this budget includes income, expenditure, as well as employment of capital. Now, when we have seen the definition of budget, what are some of the advantages of budget? Briefly, we want to name the advantages of budget that a budget acts as a way of comparing planning. Remember, each organization must make a plan. So the way of comparing a plan is to make a budget. Point number two, it improves the communication and the coordination among the management and employees. So you get that a budget, we use it in as a tool of communication and coordination among the management and the employees of an organization. Point number three, it helps in clarifying the authority and responsibility of, the, of departmental managers and, and other staff members. Remember, there is that authority, there is that uh, responsibility that each and every employee of an organization has. So the budget is there to clarify this. Finally, we can also say that we use it to determine and evaluate the performance of the business enterprise. So we can make, uh, we can use it in preparing, I'm making a comparison between one year's budget with another year's budget. So those are some of the advantages of budget. Now, when you talk about budgetary controls, budgetary controls simply here means techniques. So we have those techniques which are used and which are adopted to control the business more effectively. So the techniques now here that are adopted to control the business more effectively, we refer them as the budgetary control. Now, when you talk about budget, we have the functional budget. Briefly, I want to, uh, to highlight them. The functional budget we have is the sales budget, purchases budget, we have the production budget, we have the sales and distribution cost budget, as well as the cash budget. Now, today's lesson, I want to focus more on the cash budget. So when I talk about a cash budget, is prepared, is a budget prepared to show the expected cash receipts and payment in the next few months, as well as one year, within one year. So what shows, I'm at this budget, it shows the receipts, cash receipts and payments that are made either within one year. So when you talk about a cash budget, a cash budget uh, serves for the following purposes. Uh, for example, we can say a cash budget ensures availability of revenue expenditure. So that's po point number two. It indicates when, where, and how much cash will be needed and whether permanent or temporary. Point number three, preserves as a liquid throughout, as the liquidity throughout the year. Now, I want us to focus an illustration on how to prepare a cash budget. So, the question will be shown below. So, this is the way we prepare a cash budget. So the cash budget must have a title, must have a title. We prepare a cash budget. So the cash budget should have the title. That is box limited. Then cash budget. Then 
then you need to tell us for the period for period june 1st to december 31st then for that period that we have been given now it's for the period first june up to 31st december so you need to prepare the quorums for those months that we have been given there we have shillings 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 here shillings here shillings and this one shillings so here we start with the receipts the receipts so we shall go through we see all those receipts and we record them at that particular point so under the receipts we shall start with the balance brought forward the balance brought forward so when you look at our question we are told that the first point a cash in cash in hand at the end of may 2017 will be shillings 180,000. So that is the parents brought forward, and that is the receipt 180,000. 180,000. So will be brought forward. Um, will be the parents brought forward for the month of June. So we go through down. Then we are told. 60% of sales proceeds are received in the current month, 30% in the following month, and the currency received on the two months after sales. So it simply means 60% of the sales is received the same same month. 30% the following month. Then the remaining currency of 10% will be received after two months. So there we shall have receipts, that is from the sales, receipts from the sales. So here we write receipts from sales. I will classify those sales. So the sales of 60%. We have the sales of 30% and we have the sales of 10%. Since we are told to prepare a cash budget from June to December, now let us focus on the sales of June. Sales of June amounting to 160,000. So 60% of 60% 60 of 160,000 will be received the same same month so if you take 60 percent so receipts here let me show my workings my workings so so here we have the receipts from sales from sales so 60 percent for example the month of June, 60% of 160, so times 160,000, we will receive the current month. Then we have 30% times 160%, we will be received the following month, 10% of 160,000, we will be received in two months of 160 so we take 60 percent times 160,000 that is the sales shillings 96,000 the same month or current month 30 percent of 160 will be 48,000 shillings 48,000 the following month then 10 percent 10 percent after two months for example, the one of June, we will go June, July, and it will be paid, Amma will be received on August. So 
Ten percent, sixteen thousand. So shilling sixteen thousand. So you will do the same for others. So we write here ninety six thousand received on the same day. Then thirty percent of sixth of the sales of June will be received the following month. So forty eight thousand here. Then the ten percent on the month of June will be received after two months after two months so sixteen thousand will be received or during the month of August. so we are told the sales one seventy thousand for the month of july so if we write here july you will do the same so sixty percent times one seventy thousand the same same month 30% of 170,000 the following month 10% times 170,000 170,000 will be received 2 months after sales so the 60% of 170,000 will give you 102,000 102,000 the 30% 30% will give you shillings 51,000 the following month. 10% will give you shillings 17,000. Shilling 17,000 after two months. So, July now sells here. I write 102,000. The current. The 30% after will be received the following so i write here 51000 then the 10 percent will be received two months after sales so two months after sales that is after july and agassi so we write here 17000 the month of september so we go to the month of august the sales for the month of August was amounting to shillings 200,000. So we write here August. So 60% of 200,000 will be received the same month. 30% times 200,000 will be received the following month. 10% times 200,000 will be received two months after sales so the 60 percent of 200,000 will give you shillings 120,000 the 30 percent of 200 will give you shillings 60,000 and the 10 percent will give you shillings 20,000 therefore we record so during the month of august the sales was 200,000 60 percent received received the current month here 120,000 the 30 percent of its sales be received the following month so shilling 60,000 here then the 10 percent for sales of August to be received two months after sales so the two months after sales shall be the month of october the same to september so we work on september the sales was also two hundred thousand so sixty percent of two hundred thousand the thirty percent of two hundred thousand the following month ten percent of the following month will be received after two months so this one will be shillings, 120,000. So shillings, 60,000 here. This one shillings, 20,000. So the sales for the month of September, 60% received the same month. So here we write 120,000. 30% the following month, shillings 60,000. The following month will be October. The 10% after two months, that will be the month of November 20,000 let us go to the month of October 
so you will be doing the same month of october the sales was 180000 180000 the month of october 180000 so october is here october so the sales is 180000 60% times 180,000 the same month 30% of 180,000 the following month 10% of 180,000 will it be 2 months after sales 2 months after sales so 60% of 180 Of 180 will be 108,000 so shillings 108,000 30% 30 percent will be shillings 54,000 54,000 and the 10 percent will be shillings 18,000 so let us go to the month of October and we record 60 percent the same month 108,000 30 percent the following month so will be the month of november 54000 then 10 percent two months after so that one will be 18000 the month of december november sales was also 180000 so 60 percent times 180000 you get shillings 108000 the same month, 30% of 180,000 will be shillings 54,000. The following month, 10% of 180,000 will be two months after sales. So 18,000. So we record the month of November, 60% the same month, 108,000. 30% for the sales of November will be the following month, so 54,000 here, and the 10% will be recorded two months after sales. Therefore, two months after sales will be the month of January. So here we write we have debtors, debtors for the month of November. So for the month of November, we have a data owing and shillings 18,000. Let us now go to the month of December, the last month here, December. The sales for the month of December was 200,000. So 60,000, 60% to be received the current month, the same, same month. The same, same month. The 30% to be received the following month. So of 200,000 to be received the following month, 10% will be received two months after, two months after sales. So this, the 60% of 200 will be shillings 120,000. The 30% will be shillings 60,000. So the 10% will be shillings 20,000. And therefore, in the month of December, because it's the last month, what we are supposed to do is to record the sales of 60%. Therefore, which means the sales of 30% will be received the month of January, and the sales of 10% will be received on the month of February. So we therefore record here shillings 120,000, and therefore the debtors here, we have the debtors there, and the debtors for December, for the month of December, will it be the 30% of 200,000, shilling 60,000, and the 10% of 200,000 to be shilling 20,000. So the debtors will it be owing us shilling 80,000. Back here, you can see gaps. You can see the gaps here. Those gaps are the ones that I want now we fail. So the 30% received on June will be the sales of May. 
So the sales of May, the sales of May will give us 30% to be received the month of June. So the 30%, so May, let me work here on May. The 30% of May will be received. So the sales for May, the sales for May was shillings 160,000. So 30% of 160,000 will be shillings 48,000. And this one was received the month of June. So we write here 48,000. The 10%, 10% of May will be received two months after. So the two months after 16,000 will be received the month of July. So we record here 16,000. So we have been left with one gap here. One gap here, 10%. So this 10% will be the one of uh, April because the 10% sale is received two months after sale. So if we go to April here, the month of April, the 10% of the sales month of April, 150,000, which will give us shillings 15,000, will be received on the month of June. So the month of June is there. And that's how we fill the receipts from sales. Now we go to the next statement. The next statement, but C, is on supply. Supply, that is the purchases. Now, on the purchases side, remember, as I said, the cash purchase, we have receipts and the payment. So we need to have a gap for receipts and we need to have the gap for payments. So I can have payments down here and here we had the receipts. Now on the payments, that suppliers are paid one month after delivery. One month after delivery. That if you deliver the month of June, you will be paid the month of July. That's what, that's what, the, what, that's, that's what the statement means. That the, so the purchases for May will be paid on June. So let us see May purchases. That is 110,000 will be paid. So 110,000. So we say here is the purchases. So I write here purchases. So payment on purchases. So May, I say 110,000 will be paid on June. The 90,000 for June will be paid July. So you record 90,000 here. The 90,000 for July will be paid August. So you record 90,000 here. The August purchase of 80,000 will be paid in September. So 80,000 there. The, the one for September will be paid October, so 130,000 here. One there, the one for October will be paid November, 140,000 will be paid November. And finally, uh, the one for November will be paid in the month of December, so 60,000 will be paid the month of December. Therefore, the month of December, we have creditors we have creditor and this is the creditor for december for the month of december remember the one for the month of december amounting to shillings 160,000. we have not yet been paid so that one will be paid in the month of in the month of january point number d we are told the corporation tax the co for 2016 amounting to shillings 20,000 will be paid on this on 30th September 2017 so 30th December 30th September 2017 so let us look at the corporation tax is a payment so we have here um, corporation tax and the one of 20,000 will be paid 
on the month of September, 30th on the month of September 2017. Then the next point E is the contractee retention monies amounting to shillings 50,000 will be paid on 30th June 2017. So contractee retention, that's our payment. Contractee retention, so retention here will be paid, that's amounting to 50,000, will be paid at the end of the month of June, that yet, June 2017. Then from there, we are told, part F, part F, we are told that shareholders at their last extraordinary general meeting increased the share capital by shillings 70,000, and the first call of 40,000 was received on the month of October 2017. On the month of October 2017. So there you need to write that is a compensation monies and that is a receipt. And that is a receipt. So the receipt is received on the month of October 2017. So this is the receipt. I can say shareholders shareholders conversation so it was received the month of october 2017 so you record on the month of october 2017 as 40000 part g we are told that in the month of october 2017 the company is due to receive 20,000 20, compensation of the civil suit. So that is the month of October you receive. So we have a civil suit that was received the month of October, October 2017, amounting to 20,000. And finally, we are told that the monthly administration expenses amounting to 33,000 including the factory depreciation charge of 4,000 and the preliminary expense of 3,000 those monthly administration 33,000 it includes factory depreciation as well as the preliminary expense so can you subtract the two the 33,000 minus the 7,000, you will get 26,000. So that's a payment. You say administration expense. So 26,000 each month. 26,000. 26,000. 26,000. 26,000. 26,000, 26,000, and this one 26,000. So it was paid every month. And finally, office equipment. Office equipment amounting to shillings 13,000 will be paid in the month of November. The last one, office equipment. So can we have office equipment as the last ex uh, payment? So office equipment. So will be paid on the month of what? The month of November. Go back to November 2017. And we have 13,000. 13, there now I can get the total receipts. As well as the total expenditure for each month. For each month. For the month of June. The total receipts. Total receipts for the month of June will be 339,000. Now let us get the total payments. Total payments for the month of June, which will be 186,100. When we subtract the receipts minus payments, we shall get something we call balance carried forward. The balance carried forward will be 153,000. And that is the end of the month of June.
when we go now to the next month of July, the balance carry down shall be the balance plot forward. I'm a plot down. So 153,000. So take 153,000, add the receipts here, then we shall get a total of 319,000. Then those are the total receipts. Now let us go to the total payments. Total payments will be 116,000. Now for the 103,000. So 103,000 will be carried forward to the month of August. So here we write 203,000. So let us add the receipts. This one, now the receipts for the month of August is 390,000. Let us add the payments. The payments will be 116,000. And now when you subtract the two, when you subtract the two, you will get 274. So 274,000 will be the balance carried forward to the month of September. So when we start the month of December, we call it as the parents brought down. 274,000. Add the receipts. So we get 471,000. Those are the receipts for the month of September. Then 126,000. Those are the payments for the month of September. So when we subtract the two, we shall get 345,000 as the balance carried forward for the month of October. So we are we now the month of October, we shall have a balance brought forward of 345,000. We add the receipts that we have there. We shall get 593,000. 593,000 and the receipts will be what uh, those are the receipts and now the payments will be 156,000 so when you take the total receipts for the month of October minus the total payments for the month of October we shall be left with a balance carried forward of 437,000 now 437,000 carried forward to the month of November, 437,000 carried forward to the month of November and add the receipts, you will get, Ama, you will arrive at 619,000, 619,000. The total payments for the same same month will be 179,000 so you can see now the total uh, receipts and total payments for the month of October when we offset the balance will remain 440,000 440,000 440,000 will be carried over to the following month of December 440,000 we add the receipts, we shall get 632,000. 632, and the, the payments will be amounting to 86,000. 86, so when you offset the balance you are left with, the month of December will be 546,000. And that is the symbol method, and that is the simplest way of preparing a cash purchase. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. Please watch, subscribe. That is Mwari Hassan channel, so that you get more details on cost accounting, financial accounting, as well as...